the way in which I designed the VIC-20 era was uh, more or less, I would, I would stop and sit down with a piece of graph paper and sketch out roughly what I thought I wanted to happen. But it was always fairly rough, just a, a, a rough guide really. The game itself would really come together when you actually sat down and started coding it. Always the first and most important step, but still to this day, the first thing that I always do when I'm making a game is get the player character in there and under control. Because once you've got controls, you're always going to be refining the controls as you make the game. So that's the most important thing to put in first and then build the rest of the game around it. There's always significant moments when you first get shots fired, when you first get things that you can shoot at, when you first get points, all these different things. But go start with a rough sketch and then build it up and let the game fill itself in. A lot of the game creates itself. Once you start the process, it fills itself in as you go along. I don't know if you can really call my games non-violent since a lot of them are shoot 'em ups but they tend to be shoot 'em ups in a very abstract context. I'm not really into sort of like realistic you know, depiction of realistic murder or anything like that. I think I just like my games to be a bit humorous and not take themselves too seriously. Games are games after all, and the moment you start getting too serious about them, then I think they lose some of their appeal, at least they do to me. People look at me and think I was some kind of hippie and I did it out of some hippie ideal, but it's not really that. I think it's just my personal preference. For me, producing a game was such a personal thing. It was like an entire whole that I, I kind of made myself, and I, I, I never really felt inclined to farm out any part of it, apart from the, the music. I did, of course, work with my friend James Disney, who's a guy I'd known, we grew up together, we were childhood friends, who was a, a, a piano prodigy, he used to play the piano for, at school, you know, he, was doing, he was doing grade eight piano when we were like in, in infant school, he was that good. And so it was fun to work with him, but the actual game design process and putting it all together, it was just a very personal thing, so I just ended up doing it all myself just because that's how it felt right to do it, really. I wanted to do a Defender-style game, but I always wanted to do something a bit different with my games as well, so I came up with this idea of there being two planets, one above and one below, and I thought, space sheep, you know, interstellar space sheep. Um, I, by that stage, I got used to putting all the beasties in the game, so it seemed like a natural thing to do, and then again, the game kind of extrapolated itself from there. Once you had the two planet surfaces and you had the space sheep in the middle, then you needed grass for the spaceship to land to recover its energy to graze on. You needed some kind of thing going on that was a bit like Defender, so you had taken the charge of the planet buster gun. You had the thing where if it fully charged up, the planet exploded like in Defender. So it was very inspired by Defender, but also it had to have its own stuff. It had to have the sheep, it had uh, references to other video games in there like the Pie Man and things like that. So it had to be a Jeff Minter game as well as a Defender-inspired game. Um, that's how it came to be, really.